been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Hey, you two. Welcome to RV Daydream on a beautiful day in Northeast Ohio. Uh, we've been at kind of our home area for a little while. And one of the reasons that we're in this area is because we had some packages that were delivered to us from Pro Pride. That's why we're standing on the front of the RV. This is a 2020 Rockwood. It's a 30 foot travel trailer and Pro Pride makes hitches for travel trailers. Even with our F-350, which Heidi can flip around and show you there. Um, it's a 2020 also. It's a long bed, four wheel drive, crew cab, plenty of power. And this is only a 30 foot trailer. I could probably tow this with basically a ball hitch and nothing else. However, we've been towing about 15,000 miles, 12 to 15,000 miles total. We've been full time on the road and this hitch has made a huge difference in how I tow down the road. Not saying that you're going to be able to get the same results, but I tow whatever the speed limit is pretty much everywhere we go. And you know, most of the time that's not the case. Most of the time you guys, you know, 63 miles an hour for saving gas, being a little bit more safe. Um, if it's 70, I tow 70. If it's uh, 75, I can tow 75. Um, Pro Pride's a big reason for that. Now I'm not going to say that that's uh, you know, something that you bolt on and now all of a sudden you can drive as fast as you want with whatever you have. I'm just saying that the level of comfort and security that I have using the ProPrite hitch has given me peace of mind to feel very comfortable going down the road. Trucks, high winds, uh, we were in all over the, the U.S. We were in Florida, we went uh, back to Ohio, we went to South Padre Island in Texas. Storms, high winds down there, no problems. Uh, went over to Arizona, uh, all the way through Colorado, up through Idaho, Washington, Oregon, California, through the fires of Nevada, um, back up to North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, all the way down to uh, all the states, all the way down to Arkansas, and then headed back up to Ohio, and that's how we got here. And all that traveling, we never had any issues with the hitch. Heidi, who's doing the camera right now, is also very apt at hooking up the RV herself. She has no problem with that versus the way it used to be with the snap-up brackets. So you need to look into the reason that you may want to get into a Pro Pride. Now in the description of the video will be a link. Um, if you want to click that link, get into the website, do some short reading. Uh, there might be some videos you can watch at their website. Uh, at that point, if you have questions, give them a call. You can talk to uh, pretty much anybody at any time and they'll give you all the answers that you need. One of the things though that I have been waiting for uh, is the first time I heard about this upgrade that we're going to do today and that's what we want to talk about. So Heidi's going to dial us in a little bit closer on the jacks. Now these jacks are used in replacement of most weight distribution hitches that have the snap-up brackets and the chains. So you can see the chains were replaced with a bar and then of course the snap-up bracket is replaced with a jack. And the luxury that you get with that is being able to get your weight distribution bars, the tension that they need, as simple as just using a cordless drill. If you need less, you go less. If you need more, you do more and we go ahead and mark the jacks at increments that make sense to uh, measurements. So basically uh, you want to measure out on the side of the jack and give it four inches, maybe five inches, maybe six inches of tension on the bar depending on how much tongue weight you have and that varies. So it's nice that you can have this adjustability because sometimes you may have a full tank, a full freshwater tank and that's 60 gallons of water that's usually placed near the front of the rig and that 60 gallons as you can guess is a lot more weight that's going to be on the tongue. Same with the load that you have in the back of your truck. You may actually have more in the back of your truck that might require a 
little bit more of a uh, tension on the weight distribution bar because you might get a little bit more sag in the back of your vehicle. As far as ease, as far as the ability to fine tune your tension, you don't have to worry about let's go to the next link in the chain. You don't have to worry about let's go ahead and readjust our L bracket to get the bar up on there. There is no force. There's no work to adjust your weight distribution bars. So why am I talking about an upgrade? Because this seems like the perfect system. Well, not quite. And I'll tell you why. The jacks themselves, anytime you have anything that's supporting weight, you want it as compact as possible so you don't have a leverage problem going on. I mean, after all, you see me holding the cordless drill here. I wouldn't walk around with the drill out here. Obviously, it's wear on my shoulder. It's going to fatigue my shoulder. Things are going to set. I'm just not going to be able to do it all the time. So I'm going to hold it close to my body because it's easier to support weight and keep leverage, you know, close to whatever it is that's supporting it. Well, it's the same with the jacks. You want these jacks as compact as possible, but still offering pull on these tension bars. The problem is, is the more that you put weight on these bars, on the spring bars, the taller the jack gets. And that's the exact opposite of being compressed. That is not being compressed. So the higher we go, the more leverage that these bars could apply to the jack against the frame. I'm gonna say I've had no problems with that whatsoever. Our jacks have not moved from this position since we installed them the day we installed them. I've never had to retorque the bolts or anything. The jacks have worked flawlessly. But I will have to say there was a downfall that we experienced quite a bit. And that is, this is a metal to metal contact. And there's nothing more, if you wanna look up kinda of close, nothing more than metal to metal that is wearing out. It's, it's just wearing out in this area. And you can see the grease, and I'm getting it on my hands even. I've always had to grease these sections to keep them from squeaking. Same down here. You have a metal to metal contact that there is no uh, kind of friction reducer other than the grease that you apply on there. And that needed to be changed. I, I really didn't like that. So the new version twos, that's what they've done. They've gone to a complete different setup and a different jack. And I'm very excited because it's definitely, definitely making this already great hitch even better yet. Here it is in a relatively heavy box, but compact. Uh, I don't know, the box probably weighs about 30 pounds. Uh, don't know exactly. Uh, it came FedEx and it came relatively quick, which was really nice uh, because these have just been released. These things have just been on the market for a very short time. And again, uh, this is coming out of ProPride in Michigan. So let's open it up. Immediately, I remember the packaging of the Pro Pride when I got it, and this is not any different. They they do a, a foam. If you buy your hitch, you're going to get the same kind of packaging for the hitch. It's a foam capsule that they basically put this in, so it can't be damaged. I'll go ahead and grab the instructions, and yeah, looks pretty pretty much like I thought. But man, this is going to be so awesome! Ready, guys? Check out the new jack setup. These are nice. These are much heavier. Uh, the way I understand is they have a different uh, type of escalation process, you know, um, elevator process, I should say, for the jack. So it's a reduced torque that's required up here to raise and lower the jack. And as you can see, in this case, this is in almost the fully raised position. That's why it's so compact. So the nice thing about it is you start off in a, a, a pretty good length, but as you tighten, it will compact and get even smaller to reduce that leverage on the frame like I talked about. Not only that, but another big point. Currently, the jacks that are on the RV are being held on with one U-bolt. It's been doing a fine job. I haven't had any issue with the mount, like I said. This one, you can see there's four U-bolts. 
that's two per jack that's going to mount on the frame. So much tighter to the frame and less lateral movement once you get them installed. Look at this. Remember that squeaky bar that I showed you that was all greasy and everything? Spherical rod ends. This is going to be the new pivoting point. Instead of that bar just moving around on metal to metal, you now have spherical rod ends or what they call heim joints, um, which it's automotive grade and they're heavy duty. This is nice. There is no, you're not going to be any squeaking with this. This is what it looks like outside the box. The installation instructions are going to cover also a spring bar installation. Now my spring bars are already installed. So some of the steps that are in the installation instructions isn't something that I need to do for this. So the components that you're going to be getting, of course, is both the jacks. You have a couple of lynch pins. No, these aren't extra pins, although I guess they could be used in an emergency. Uh, for the uh, over center latches, these are to keep the jacks from moving once they're in position. Uh, the four U-bolts to mount, remember what I said about that. Instead of two, you only have, you got four now. These are going to be the brackets to go down on the spring bars to replace what is currently on there. That little U-bolt, and then of course, I'm sure it's just going to be mounted inside the bracket that way, which we'll get to it. And then of course, all the attaching hardware. They do give you a parts list if you want to see here. And on the parts list itself, you want to make sure, of course, you have all those components and that nothing was missed. If so, give them a call, no problem. They'll send you what you need immediately. Most of this stuff can be picked up at a hardware store just in case or if you need to replace it at some point. The one thing that I was concerned about on some level, I know with the current jacks that we have on there now, the legacy jacks, that's what they're referring to for those ones that I just showed you. Um, I know the height. I know the height, what it needs to be when we're traveling down the road. So I was concerned that I would have to try to figure out what we normally ride at take a measurement from the frame down to the spring bar, and then at that point, put the new one on, and then figure out what that height would be again. Uh, you don't have to, you know why? They have already thought of that. They've put it in the instructions in the back, how thoughtful of them, and this is basically a comparison. And they're saying that uh, if your jack height is seven and a quarter, you know, on the legacy jack, the old jack with the hook that's on there now, so seven and a quarter, well, that equals three inch on the new one. So you know what you need to measure down on, you know, to, to equate to what you were running on the legacy jack. It just so happens that exact measurement is not exactly what we run. We run about six, maybe seven sometimes. So I know I'm in that range. So I'm going to be in the uh, two, three, four, instead of the five, six, seven that we normally operate on. That's going to vary for everybody all different measurements it's has a lot to do with the way you have the jack set up the uh, hitch set up and the weight of your truck your trailer how much it squats all that but the fact that they give you a crossover to let you know very nice that's top notch there. again the fact that we already have our spring bars installed this video is going to cover you having the same system and changing over and putting on the new versions of the jacks, which is awesome. I, I'm still excited about it. The reason is we've used it so much. We've towed so much. This is just going to make it that much easier, that much nicer. First thing we need to do, of course, take off the propane tank cover. Now, if you guys remember, if you, or maybe you don't remember, that when you installed your uh, jacks and trying to find the, the depth in which they were supposed to be mounted on the frame, they had a like a 26 inch was the, the magic number. Uh, 26 inches from here to where they were at. Um, of course, that number is going to vary based on lots of things like where your propane tank is mounted at. And this is really going for the people that don't have uh, anything mounted on their, on their trailer at this time. But retrofitting wise, uh, we already know where it needs to be. Ideally, um, I could put the jacks all the way up to here. Uh, there's a white line from when I first did it. However, this was within range. I was allowed to move the jack back to this marking that it's currently at based on the variance that was allowed. So again, you can see we just have one giant U-bolt that's here and we get to get rid of that big giant U-bolt. Um, we get to get rid of the 
the the whole jack <laughs> and go to the new one and the one single u-bolt although again i've had no issues with it whatsoever it's done a great job um, the version that they're giving us is just that much better it's just better all the way around so we'll take off the u-bolt here that'll allow the jack to be loose but i also need to take off this little bolt down here this little u-bolt that's here but we'll get rid of all this i'll get to clean these up and uh, keep them a little bit cleaner than they currently are the u-bolt of course is just 9 16 same with this u-bolt the large u-bolt that's 9 16 so we're, we're moving forward relatively fast but i wanted to show you with these old legacy jacks i would raise it up to roughly there now look at all this height that i added this jack was was down to here and now it's up to here uh, some people even run them up to eight and a half inches look how high that is and that that makes it to where there's a lot of movement that could potentially be putting into this with this single u-bolt these are the components that you'll be taking off again this is a retrofit installation video not a complete installation video so if you guys remember the ones that had done their own installation remember this plate right here well they've got rid of that i want you to take notice of a couple of things um, there's lots of gussets here uh, or i should say a gusset and there's a gusset on the other side but i want you to take notice of how deep this is so you're talking about two inches again this worked fine i didn't have any problems with it but you're talking about two inches down on a frame that may be a lot bigger than that and could offer more lateral support remember we don't want these things to move or rock back and forth and the taller they would get there's a potential for that and not only that but the support itself down here um, we have a sandwich plate in place to take up some room uh, that puts this support a little bit further away from the main frame it's another surface and it's also another part you know you have you know three more parts you have to deal with here the jam nut the, the bolt itself and then the uh, the plate for the uh, spacer and then of course uh, the height the, the the amount that these could go down could be increased so one u bolt that's what used to hold the jack on there um, no issues again with it and then this is the bar that actually it has war metal to metal there's so much noise that will be generated so look at the bar in the hole look how much that opened up again this is with like 10 to 12 thousand uh, miles worth of towing uh, you can see it kind of mushroomed out there on the camera and then over here same thing look at that wear and i'm sure i'm going to see the same thing on the other side and our weight distribution because our truck is so much an overkill uh, that's towing a 30-foot trailer that's only you know 7500 pounds 7600 pounds when we load it up the way that we travel um, we don't have to put a lot of tension on these bars for weight distribution reasons yet you see the kind of wear that they experience so they've eliminated this they've gone to something quieter stronger and that has more friction uh, reducing properties so you can see the new version 2 jack we still have that same two inches but only on one side look at that we've got four inches of lateral support that's up against the frame now not only that but we've lost that spacer you don't need that spacer any longer uh, the other thing that you may want to take a look at is four holes why is there four holes that's because there's now two u-bolts that come through here and hold this to the frame not just one these are left and right no matter how you put them on they, there's no specific so you don't have to worry about an L or an R on these they just go on now if you look putting them on same process as before and here's something that's kind of an added bonus now as you can see the jack is actually positioned more directly over top of the spring bar which allows this bar to be supported and pulled directly up the old system had this jack inboard more i mean if you remember the jack was pretty much directly over the frame but because they've put this extra bracket on here uh extra long bracket so if you see this extra gusseting that's involved here to give it even more support they can put this jack directly over the spring bar for a more direct pull and you are i mean already it's already tighter but 
the other definite benefit of this jack now being out is I can move it a little bit closer. Do you guys remember? I was here. Look at the mark that I was at. See that mark? That's all the closer I could get to my propane tank cover. I can now go closer. I can move it as close as that. Now look at that. I've cut that 26 inch down to where it's just within a, a fraction of an inch. This was within range. I was within an inch and a half. It was only just a little, it was back an inch and a quarter. Um, they said that I could be from the mark that's measured out to the ball, but now I can get even closer. I can be even closer now. So again, just another bonus. At this point, pretty straightforward, but there is a change that they've made. And I'm sure I know the reason, even though I haven't talked to anybody about it. And that is these big flat washers. In the pictures, in the diagrams, there is no big flat washer shown other than it's part of the parts list. They do have a tag though that is superimposed on the bottom of the page that says a change has been made. And instead of just pushing, putting uh, the lock washers and the nuts on the U-bolt, instead of just doing that, um, which of course you, you do this, <laughs> you, you, you don't put it this way. You, they don't, do not go this way, just to let you know. <laughs> the bolts don't go this way. They didn't make the holes so you could accidentally do it. Just don't try to force it. But usually, or the way that they did have it set up, was that the U-bolt, which I'm gonna get it perfectly lined up here, there we go. Uh, the U-bolt before, whenever it went in, you would put the washer on and then the nut. I think that the problem that they probably ran into is the lock washer was um, maybe not completely seated into a good setup because of the hole uh, that is rather big or the right size for this bolt to slide in a little bit easier. But also this would tear up the powder coat and promote rusting even sooner. So they've got a flat washer that goes here now in place and then the lock washer. Now, in general rule of thumb, you're not supposed to use flat washers with lock washers. The lock washers will then bite into a washer that could move and allow the nut to loosen. However, this is a large flat washer that will allow a larger friction surface to be applied to the bracket so that um, that shouldn't happen. But of course, you're going to check and retorque as needed. So again, pretty straightforward what I'm doing here. I'm going to mount the jacks. I'm gonna make sure that they're positioned equally on both sides. I can use those marks that I've had from my previous installation. If not, you're gonna to have to measure. Of course, this jack needs to be just as far away from the ball as the other jack, so they match. And then we'll move on to the spring bar and the mounting of this component here. When tightening the bolts, equally tighten the bolts. Don't do one side and then go to the other. Um, don't, you, you don't necessarily have to cross tighten or anything like that. You want the general amount of threads on the top of the bolts to match. It says this is in the instructions also, but this is just kind of like general mechanic stuff. Tightening these don't require a ton of force. We're not talking about the kind of force that's needed when you're putting on your stinger on your hitch. Um, you're talking, what they're saying is 55 pounds max. And again, the reason is, is because the jack is so well supported by the frame with that long, plate and that gusseted weld to help with the support it really doesn't need that kind of protection from lateral support uh, like the old one did so 55 am i getting out my torque wrench no why i can kind of judge six uh, 55 pounds i know my lug nuts on the trailer and the lug nuts on the truck are roughly 100 pounds 100 foot pounds so half of that so you can get an idea it doesn't take a lot so i'm just going to use the wrench i will watch whenever i'm tightening to make sure that the lock washers fully compress so they can lock in and then i'll make sure that i i don't have any deflection of this plate because what they're afraid of and they should be and what you should be afraid of is if you over tighten it you will snap welds you'll snap the welds from the things that are supported the gusts the gussets and the brackets and everything because you're bending the plate that it's welded to you don't want that if you want to do anything get out your torque wrench torque it to 55 pounds check it then after you've driven it a little ways to make sure it hasn't loosened i'm going to do what i do and 
you should do what you do. <laughs> but 55 pounds, uh, it's not a lot of force. And then I'll double check it, you know, after we've towed a while to make sure nothing's loosened up. I suggest you do the same. Okay, so I kind of skipped the step and it doesn't make a difference really one way or the other. Um, you can do what I did first, um, but uh, in the instructions, it's gonna tell you to do this first. This is the bracket that replaced that U-bolt and of course that bar that I had. So on top, pretty simple. You can see the holes line up. Now this is pretty much why uh, right now this kit is specific to ProPride because this hole you know, matches the holes that are in you know, currently this bar, this spring bar. Um, so if you guys are watching this video and you're thinking about doing this on yours, get hold of Brent out at ProPride. Um, Tell them that uh, RV Daydream sent you. You've seen our video on YouTube and you're thinking about doing the same thing on yours. Yeah, these can be utilized on other hitch systems. Obviously, I'm going to tell you to use the ProPride hitch because this, this is just one nice feature of an entire hitch that has nothing but nice features. It's pretty straightforward. The bolts go in. No washers needed, anything like that. You don't want the bolts to come up because they don't have the room then to clear the spherical rod end. And then these are the lock washers. These are nylock washers. They have a nylon on them. Uh, you don't want to be putting these on and off multiple times. Uh, once you have those both on, you're just going to snug them down to where both uh, have some thread showing. That means that the nylock has been engaged fully with the bolt sticking out. And it doesn't, again, doesn't have to be overly tight. It just has to be snug. Um, so don't get out your He-Man arms and start working with that. And you want this to be parallel with the bar. I mean, it, it may twist a little bit. It's not going to make too much difference, but try to keep it as straight as possible. So I'm going to snug these down. Once I do that, I'm going to then insert this bolt through here. I'll show you what that looks like because you have to sandwich it a certain way. And not only that, um, I want to tell you a little tip that I think, personally, uh, how to position these bolts. And the hint is it's not in, <laughs> it's out. Their instructions clearly say it's a three-quarter inch, but it, again, because of changes, uh, these are kind of just being released, so they might be finding that you know they can get away with something else that's a little bit better. Um, I have no problem with multiple wrenches and sockets, so uh, if you have a limited tool set, uh, just be aware you might be running into you know different uh, tools than what the instructions are saying. Because initially it was just three quarters uh, of an inch and nine sixteenths, but now I've already got eleven sixteenths out, and I also got um, you know what I just talked about a, a five eighths. So um, just be aware. The reason that I'm talking about putting these nuts and bolts out is because of this gusset back here. And if you look, there's a chance, even though this, this spherical rod end will move around, and you could probably position it to where it would be parallel. Um, the natural position for this is like this, you know, straight on. So you want these to face out so they do not hit the gusset that is on the frame back here. The, the, the ends of the bolts will hit the gusset if, if it's facing in and you may be in this far of a position up potentially that's all depending on what your situation calls for uh, so that's why i say these bolts should be out um, as far as the one on the bottom i don't think it'd make much of a difference it could be out or in uh, preferably i would like to do these out anyways just to make sure that they haven't loosened you can see that as you just walk back to your hitch if it if these are facing out you can't tell if that bolt back there is loosening or not. Okay, so you can see here, here's the components that you're gonna be dealing with, putting the spherical rod in in the bracket. So the bolt, obviously, that goes in first, but the next thing that goes in is one of these washers that have a, a built-in shoulder on them, a built-in cone. That cone's gonna to face towards the spherical rod end. That way it's being supported correctly. So now you have the spherical rod end that's gonna go in. And now the next washer with the cone, again, faces the spherical rod end or heim joint, whatever you guys want to call it. Uh, automotive wise, I always called them spherical rod ends because I worked for Summit Racing and that's what we were required to call them. Uh, although the racers always called them heim joints. And then the washer on the outside 
to help the nut get supported on the bracket all the way around and have a good tighten. So again, here's something that you don't over tighten. You just want to snug it to where the threads of the bolt are just sticking out because it doesn't require any force for this to, it's not trying to pull it out. It's trying to pull it up. Well, the bolt's in place, so you don't have to worry about that. So again, with the uh, three quarter inch ratchet and uh, three quarter inch wrench, and we'll go ahead and uh, tighten this up. And you see, didn't take very much for me to have those threads showing. And I have no doubt that that's not going to come loose uh, because it is engaged fully. So now we're finished. You can see the, the bolts and nuts are facing out again, so don't hit the gusset. And we've got the ability to raise and lower this and uh, get the kind of tension that we want. Nice. Now don't, don't bottom it out. Uh, make sure you don't bottom it out. You don't want to break anything in here when you're using a, a cordless drill. The nice thing is, is the amount of movement that's needed to, to move this jack up and down is probably a little bit less than the old legacy jack. And what's nice about that is you don't necessarily need a cordless drill to put it up and down. Um, you could get away with just the wrench. And if you guys remember, when you bought your hitch, if you bought the entire hitch like we did, um, they give you a three quarter inch ratcheting rich, uh, wrench, <laughs> three quarter inch ratcheting wrench uh, for the uh, jack, just for that reason, the old jack. So yeah, I could, um, if I need to, uh, lower or raise using the ratcheting wrench. So. It's kind of nice. I, I like it. Actually, you could look at this. Look at that. As far as putting it down. Now, there's no tension on it, obviously, but it's kind of nice to know that if I need to bring it out, I can just use this clover leaf that they have up here to uh, spin it around. Once you get it to the height that you need for your application, then this pin is going to go into place for obvious reasons. You don't want your jack to uncompress or move as you drive down the road and that's what this does it keeps it in place this does not allow it to spin and get longer or shorter as you drive down the road um, which could happen so nice setup there so now with the install completely done uh, at least on this side i'll do the other side off camera as this video has already gone to production i want to add this note that is definitely noteworthy Whenever you're working on the utility side where all the cables are and everything, make sure, obviously, that you do not pinch or grab or do anything to any wiring uh, or breakaway cables where the new U-bolts go up and through. So just be aware of that. You've got potentially some obstructions on the utility side of the frame you know all the wiring coming back um, something I need to make an amendment to so let's go back to the installation I want to show you the benefits here look at the movement that we have with this bar and of course I need to I need to secure that in place but you have all this pivoting that can be done raising and lowering and so as you're driving down the road you're making your sharp turns like you would normally this is going to move quite a bit for you um, much more much much more than that other hard bar was doing and as far as the wear very minor wear because you've got components that are fit to each other real nice and tight and the friction is reduced greatly this is the new system this is the way to go i suggest that once you get all of this installed on your next trip out go ahead and do all your measurements again take your your vehicle as it's loaded which a lot of us need to do this anyways you know as we started traveling we have lost a lot of stuff out of the back of our truck a lot of stuff out of our rv we have downsized even more you guys might be the opposite way. You might have gone on the road with hardly anything, but now you're carrying around uh, a couple of extra bicycles. Maybe you're hauling some extra water because you're boondocking in the desert. All of those reasons are a good reason or a good excuse to revisit your hitch setup as far as the height, as far as the uh, the 
weight distribution, how much is being applied, and you guys know how to do that. That's in the initial install of checking your measurement on your front tires, uh, measuring the, from the, the, the ground to the fender, measuring the ground to the fender with the rear, and then uh, adjusting the squat accordingly with your stinger position and of course your weight distribution. So that's what we're gonna do. We're, whenever we hook up this next time to head out, the good news is we have a lot of experience. We know what the truck and trailer should look like once it's hooked up. We also know what it should ride like when it's going down the street once it's hooked up and the weight distribution is applied. So we get to play around with that you know, again and um, I suggest you do the same. So big kudos to ProPride. Uh, Brent, we appreciate it. Um, we're, we're very happy that we're getting a chance to install this awesome upgrade. And the link will be in the description down below um, in our video description if you're looking for ProPride products. Um, the other thing that I would suggest, which we did, although we don't have it on here because of the uh, video, we have the hitch cover and we have the jack covers. Now the jack covers, of course, will work for this also. Uh, there's not really a way for them to be fastened like they were on the legacy hitches, but they'll still work. They still cover. Um, that protects it quite a bit. Now there is some maintenance is involved. Again, it's in the instructions. You're just talking about some oiling of the jacks and uh, lubrication, of course, of the spring bars. That's, you know, that's a fitting you've got to do that every thousand miles which um, when we were traveling out west we were actually doing that every two days because we were doing five over 500 miles a day so keep an eye on that stuff and I can't wait I'm not gonna have any squeaks that I have to grease up and it's nice and clean again I, I, I really like that and as far as this video is concerned we hope to see you out here bye